we have uh, someone waiting. So I'll just wait for that person to come in. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Susan. It's a beautiful background. <laughs> well, it's real. It's not, uh, I assume that you're not out on a rainy day. In front of <laughs> not at all. It's a beautiful, real background. <laughs> yeah, look, I even have a, um, I have an, anic uh, an anachronism. Anyone recognize that? <laughs> it's a clock. <laughs> well, I have one at my home as well. It's called clock two. And it pretty much looks on the same lines. Here's my, here's my good clock. Everyone who is an intellectual likes this. So this is the right, the right group for that. Let's see. Can you see it? Wow, that's fascinating. Keeps me current on my math, math pack. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, um, Lindsay, should we go ahead and start? Yeah, I think let's get started. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. And hi, everyone. Uh, happy Tuesday, I guess. I was going to say happy Monday, but no, and then I realized it's already Tuesday. Uh, happy Tuesday, everyone. Uh, welcome to almost spring 2024 uh, term. My name is Shilpa Dasgupta. I am the manager at eLearning Support Services under the library. We are also based in the third floor of the library, which is pretty much the quietest area of the library if you have gone there or intend to visit any time during the term. Uh, our office is in room 321. So if you ever come across any Canvas related problems now or going forward, uh, please give us a visit and we will be very happy uh, to help you with Canvas uh, problems. Uh, today's session is about some of the recently introduced Canvas functionalities and Canvas tools. Uh, now, I want to highlight that there's hundreds of Canvas functionalities and hundreds of external tools uh, associated with Canvas. The intention of this session was not to go over them because obviously it's not possible to cover so much uh, and and humanly, it's not possible to intake so much of information, but uh, we thought that it will be a nice way to introduce uh, you to some of the most recently added Canvas functionalities and most recently added tools, which over the last one year, based on the feedback that we have got, uh, has proved really helpful for the instructors. But uh, we figured not everyone knows about it because obviously they are newer uh, compared to other functionalities. So we thought of designing this workshop around those comparatively new functionalities and new external tools. Uh, so I'll go ahead and share my screen. What I'll do is I will take small pauses in between when I switch, switch from one functionality to another or one tool to another, uh, just to take questions so that we are on topic. And if you have something in your mind, you can ask me right away. Okay. All right. Let me just go ahead and share my screen. Give me one moment. Can I get a thumbs up that you guys can see my screen? Okay. I got Quite a few, thank you so much. All right, so this is my sandbox course. This is not a real course because I'm not an instructor. Uh, I have admin access to all your courses, but I don't have a course of mine. So I chose my sandbox course to show you around uh, everything that I'm going to discuss in this session. The first functionality that I thought of showing you in today's session is a really, really helpful one and is called the American University Account Calendar. Now, how is it different? Well, it's different because it's not your course calendar, meaning it will not show you the course due dates or um, a, upcoming dates for your midterms or finals, but it will show you all the important dates uh, that the university has, say 
ad drops uh, or say important uh, uh, university holidays and so on and so forth. To activate that, you will need to go to the calendar feature from your global navigation menu. Now, please notice that we have a couple of different menu options. So if you are on your dashboard, basically this is how your dashboard looks. It has all the course styles, but on your extreme left, you have this blue bar or blue menu option. This is called global menu navigation menu. From here, if you go to calendar, you will see all the courses that you are an instructor on is listed here. And when you enable, these will show up with all the due dates in your calendar space. Now, I don't have any actual course, which is why you don't see any due dates, but you as an instructor, when you activate all your courses, you can see all the due dates in the space. To activate the American University account calendar, all you need to do is very simple. Under other calendars, you need to go to this little plus sign and you will already see the American University DC calendar being there waiting for you to be added. You need to enable it and just click on the blue save changes button. Once you do that, you will see all these calendar uh, university calendar details are popping up automatically as part of your existing calendar. Now, why is it important or why should you do this? Just to, you know, be on the same page with the university deadlines, university holidays. I have got feedback where instructors uh, have told me that it keeps them on the page, you know, while designing their courses or putting important dates, they have that, okay, I don't need to go to another site, but I get everything within Canvas. Because we do have uh, a university site where you can see all the holidays and all the important dates related to ad drops and um, applying for graduation, all those. But having it integrated in Canvas gives you, you know, another way of going through these important dates. Now, if you navigate through uh, upcoming uh, months, you will see there's important dates as well, part of this particular calendar, which is how to, you know, the last date to drop a spring course and so on and so forth. So you you will get all these important dates. You will get the spring break when it's starting, when it's ending, and all these dates activated automatically in your calendar. Any questions so far? All right. No questions is great. Also, you can change. There's not um, too much of customization option with this because this pretty much stays the same and um, goes with the university calendar. But one thing that you can change is the color. So if you go to these three little dots, you will see there's a color palette and you can change the color because sometimes it might happen that the color um, collides with the color of one of your other courses and you can totally change that so that it becomes more uh, visibly uh, prominent for your, your eyes and say I change it to this and oh that was not much of a change let me pick another color <laughs> all right okay so the blue is a significant change so now you see all the AU calendar events have turned into the color of your choice. That's how you can create a difference with your existing courses because you can change the colors for your class uh, classes as well. So you you know just color gives you a visibility on um, and difference with your other uh, classes. So that's uh, the first feature for this session, which is the AU calendar and how to enable it. Now I will go to the second feature that I want to highlight in this session, which is the submit for students feature. For that, I clicked on one of my course styles, which is the SDG sandbox, and I will go to the grades area, which is this from the course navigation menu. Now, remember how, how I mentioned that this particular one is the global navigation menu, but the moment you click on one of your course styles and go inside your course, this becomes your 
course navigation menu. And we can make a little bit of uh, tweak in the items that you have in this navigation menu. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Now I'll go to grades. And for any assignment that you already have in place, you can have a feature called submit for students, meaning you can submit a paper on behalf of your students. Now, why you might need this? Uh, we have seen many a uh, case that students are finding some sort of technical difficulty in uploading their papers, or they have already uploaded their, their papers and in an assignment, they might have mistakenly uploaded a different paper which was not intended to, and you have given them limited uh, attempts to upload. In those kind of situations, you can ask the student to email uh, the paper to you and you can upload it on their behalf. Now, this particular uh, feature clearly shows who has submitted it, meaning whether it's you or your student, and it also comes with a timestamp. Let me show you with a real example. So let's see um, if I can take this one. So this is one assignment. And what I did was I just clicked on the, on this area, on the, on the uh, points area, and this little gray, arrow button comes up, which when you click on it, uh, brings up this side panel. On that, you get the submit for students option. Once you click on that, it basically asks you to upload a document. Now this document is your student's assignment file. Once you have it in your computer, you can simply click on it and select that. Mm. Let me just select one random uh, file. Once you have that, you will see there is also a trash can button, meaning if you have mistakenly uploaded a different file, you can always review in this area. And if it's not the correct file, you can delete it right away from here. However, if you're sure that this is the right file, just go ahead and submit it. And here you go. So now, if I go to speed grader for the same file and same person, on top, you will see the specific date and time and who has submitted it. So although my student name is a different one, you will still, you can still see my name because I submitted it, which will give you an idea basically as an instructor that you submitted it and at what time. And this is also visible to your students. So they will also have a proof that you have submitted it in the certain time. Any questions so far? Just because this is my first time teaching and my first time in Canvas, I'm assuming that this matters because we will have put in certain percentages of like this many gets a 15% towards your grade, et cetera. Like this is because of the automatic grading capabilities of Canvas that we would want to get it in the system on time, not just be like, sure, they emailed it to me by Friday at midnight. Cool. Is that why we're you know, making sure of all of these things? Well, sort of, yes, to answer your question. And two, as I said, many a times we have seen students come uh, come to us or to their instructors directly that, oh, I have passed the time. Uh, I was finding it uh, technically difficult. My system crashed down all kind of different technical problems, you know, and they just tell that, what will I do now? Instead of opening up an entire assignment just for one student, you can just go ahead as an instructor if you think it's excusable uh, that their reasoning is excusable enough, you can just go ahead and just ask the student that, okay, send me your file, I will upload it on your, or your behalf and review it. So you can upload it even after the due date and time without giving them a late and you have as an instructor have the capacity to upload it uh, as many times as you want. So you can upload multiple files. Number one, you can upload even after the due date and uh, time without giving them a late. 
um, uh, percentage cut. And again, this is totally up to your decision making as an instructor if you do want to do that at all. If you think their reasoning is legit enough and you want to give them another chance, you can totally do that. But this is just giving instructors a little bit of extra power in, when it comes to uh, assignment submissions. Any other questions? All right, so these were the two most recently introduced Canvas functionalities that I wanted to introduce in this session. Now I will move over to some of the external tools that um, we have introduced in Canvas in last within last one year. Again, as I said in the very beginning, there's hundreds and hundreds of external tools that we have in Canvas and that not may, it might happen that everybody might not need everything, but some courses do need one uh, tool versus the other. But in the idea of this session was to introduce you to some of the most commonly used tools that were prop, uh, recently introduced and from feedback which uh, we have got over the past couple months we have found out that these have proved extremely helpful for our instructors so going to some of those tools the first one in my list is the photo roster tool now this came into existence after um, you know getting a lot of feedback from instructors that we do want to see the uh, faces of our students in online environment. Because when you are taking in-person class, it's way easier. You're interacting every day. But in today's time, when a lot have moved online and some of the classes are either hybrid or 100% online, this feature becomes important so that you can, you know, remember your students by their um, faces. For that, we introduced the photo roster tool. And to get that, you have to go to this account area. And once you click on that, among all the other uh, options, you will find the photo roster option. If you click on that, it will ask you to open in a new tab. If you're already logged into the system, you will not have to um, log in again. But if you're not, uh, it might ask you to do your duo verification and all that. But in most cases, it should not because you are already logged into Canvas and you have already done your duo uh, verification before logging in. So this should be fine. Please note that my view will be a little different from yours. Because I'm an admin, I don't have a specific class listed under my name, but you will have that because you have a particular list of classes associated with your account. In my case, I will just choose um, uh, an instructor and show you how it works. So I am taking Michael Piller, who happens to be my boss as well as an instructor in the Cougar School. I will select uh, either I can select one of the past terms or I can select the most recent, wh wh whichever you want to choose based on which class you want to see. And from this drop down, I'll select the section I'm teaching. In this case, there's one, you might have multiple. Once you have that, you will get a list of all the students that's in your class along with their image the school that they are affiliated to, and also their graduation year. Now, this gives you a very, uh, like a larger picture compared to what you can see within Canvas. Let me go back and show you how you can see your uh, Canvas pictures as well, and you will understand the difference. So within a course, if you go to the people area, you will see there's this little thumbnails and even in these thumbnails, you can see the pictures. However, the difference between this and the photo roster tool is these pictures are optional, meaning students might or might not choose 
to upload pictures here. They might choose a very different picture, maybe say an animated avatar or something like that to upload as a picture. It's totally up to their choice. And you will see only the pictures that they choose to upload or if they choose not to upload like, like these, you will see it as blank. However, in the photo roster tool, the pictures that you see are the pictures that's on their one card record, meaning on their AUID cards, which is why this uh, people section and this photo roster area is different significantly. Here you will see their official pictures that's in our AU system, and these are much larger than these small thumbnails um, and basically helps a lot for identification purposes. So you can go to the photo roster, select your term, select the class and see their basic details for your identification. Any questions so far? Uh, yeah, Shilpa, uh, this is Jay. Um, I <laughs> was trying to access it when I, um, as you were going through it, and um, I can get into the uh, canvas, but I can't get into the class roster uh, with any pictures. It says you're not authorized. So um, I'm not sure what that, how, how to resolve that or what that means. Okay, I'm taking down your uh, details. Uh, let me go uh, back to the OIT help desk team because uh, it, uh, are you a new instructor coming into yeah. AU? Uh, yeah, a new okay. adjunct. Okay, that answers the question. Uh, because you are new to the system, probably that's why you were not added to it. However, uh, I might put in a ticket or ask the person, or the team who developed this to look into it and they will be adding you. Once they add you to the list of instructors, you should be uh, able to see it. Uh, you, you'll add, you'll help me get added to the list or? Sure, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, once the session is over, I'll send a note to the team and uh, take it from there. Great, thank you. Of course. And if you don't mind, Jay, can you uh, send me your username or your AU email ID? Uh, sure. Um, you can Twitter? add it to the chat, yeah. Okay, sure. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Uh, how you doing? Uh, hey. So I was, and this is this is akin to the previous uh, Jay's question. So when you go in AU Teams, and you go to section roster, it, and it says you're not authorized. We have to have. There's another step we have to do um, to to get authorization. Not really. So as I pointed out to Jay, uh, if you are a new affiliate with the AU, the system does take some time to add you to all the systems, you know, and that takes oh. a couple of weeks. However, um, oh. let me see uh, if I can put in a request for everyone that's missing this access. And once your AU details are added, you will automatically uh, be able to see this on your account. Alrighty, thank you. Okay, and yeah, this goes out to everyone in this session. If you're finding it uh, hard or you see the same thing as Vincent and Jay, that you don't have access, just uh, send me your uh, AU username and I will put in a note uh, to the team all together because that makes it a little bit easier as well to put in one request for everyone. Uh, and the reason remains the same. If you're new to the system, it just takes time to add you to everything. And on top of that, we are going through a major transition to work day, which is why a, a lot is being worked upon right now. So that might be another reason as well. But uh, yeah, I'm very happy to put in a note with the OIT that you need access to the photo roster. It might take some time, but you will be added eventually. Okay, so uh, whoever is having problem, just uh, add your usernames to the chat and I'll collect it after our session. All right, any other questions? All right, let me quickly check my chat as well if there's any other questions there. Awesome, Susan, thanks for confirming.
And Jay and Vincent, uh, just to quickly confirm, uh, do you have access to Canvas otherwise? Not just the photo roster tool, but Canvas in general. Uh, this is Jay, and yes, yes, I can get into Canvas. I was following your instructions. It took me to the other tab, but then told me I was uh, not authorized, so there was nothing. Got wrong. it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, and likewise, I, I have, I seem to have access to everything in Canvas, and I can see the the avatar laden uh, roster <laughs> in Canvas, but not the, not okay. the photo. Okay. Okay, we will work on it. All right, so the next tool that I want to uh, highlight is called Name Coach. Now to enable it in your course, you will have to go to the settings area and we will enable it from there. Once it's enabled, you will find it at as one of the course navigation menu options. So to enable it, the first thing we will do is go to the settings go to navigation and you will see see two bunches basically one on top this one and one below the one on top are basically all the um, what i can say um like active menu options so whatever you see here are the ones that you have in your menu options Whatever you don't see in your menu options but are available to you are in the list below. So the moment you enable any of these, to be honest, it will become part of your navigation menu options as well. These are still active. They just need, uh, they just waiting to be enabled by you. So in this case, let's enable name coach and let's see how that functions. So I will enable this option, which is called record your name with name coach. And definitely very important is selecting the save button. If you only enable it and leave it like that, this is not going to take any uh, difference. You definitely have to save this change. Once that's done, you will see it has appeared in your course navigation menu. One quick pro tip, if you I go back to navigation, I can actually change the placement of my navigation menu. Now, if I simply drag this and drop anywhere I want, say, let's work with name coach. I want name coach on top before anything else. I can bring it here. Again, very important is to save the changes that I have made. And you will see the name coach is now appearing pretty much on the top where we have placed. Now coming to name coach, what it does. Normally in our classes, we do see a lot of international students coming in. For many of them, their names might be um, something we haven't heard before or it's, it's new to us basically. And we don't know how to pronounce it. Name coach comes to help in this area. On, under name coach or by using name coach, you can basically record your name in the right pronunciation, right accent and have it in there. That way you can hear these recordings as many times as you want so that you know how to pronounce the name of mainly your international students or anybody for that matter who has a not so familiar name, if I can say so. So for me, if my name is Shilpa, although it's comparatively um, not very difficult as I have heard from other people, but I have still found that many people ask me, how do you pronounce your name? I think name coach uh, answers that question. You can come to name coach, you can um, add the right pronunciation of your name as an instructor and automatically when you add it to any of your section it also lists all the members or all the users that's there in this section it lists all the names you can encourage your students to come to name coach and record their names as well once they do it you will see all the recordings in here you can click on this play button and listen to their pronunciations. And you, of course, you can use it going forward as well. Now, if you want to, uh, you know, send a reminder or an alert, uh, 
asking students to do that, you can also send an email from here. You can, uh, it, this is an automatic setup. You can simply click on it. It has a custom message. You can definitely change it. You can definitely change it. And you want to add whatever you uh, can in the body of it and simply send out the reminder. That way, students will get another email notification reminding them to come to Name Coach and add the uh, pronunciation or the right pronunciation of their name. And you can also update it. So once you have done it, maybe you find that there's there's noise in the audio file or there's too much of pause at the beginning. There's no way to really edit it for that matter, but you can definitely update your uh, recording by going here. And this same functionality will be available to all the users. So for example, I can see it just for myself. However, Andrew, for example, on his end, will see the same options available for him. So he can also uh, update it as and when needed. Any questions so far? Okay, I will quickly uh, check the chat as well. Okay, Robert, uh, I heard you. Yeah, I will collect all the usernames at the end. Um, Lindsay, if you can help me uh, kindly make a note of everyone that's sending their usernames and maybe if possible, can send it uh, to me as a list later on, that will be greatly helpful. I'm sorry, I do have a question. I said I could see my students, but it was just the thumbnails and I thought it would be really obvious where the photo tool was and now I'm finding that it's not really obvious. Can you just tell me where to find that one more time? Sure, of course. So I'll switch for some time from name coach to photo roster. I have to go to the accounts area. It's right on top on the global navigation menu. It should have oh, your- Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, it's right here. Great, thank you so much. And once you click on it, it will ask you to open in a new a tab or a new window. Oh, well, once that's you where do I'm that, I'm not authorized. Actually, I'm not authorized to view this page either. Okay, and it's all because uh, I'm assuming this session is for new instructors, and that pretty much answers the question. Uh, it uh, does take some time. But uh, as I said, I'll put in a note with the OIT team who have developed this uh, just to make sure they can expedite the process as pos possible. Thank you. All right, of course. Okay, so going back to name coach, uh, is there any question before I move on to another of our uh, tools? I'm, I'm sorry, this may be a dumb question, but uh, if I, if you encourage your students to upload the name coach and they record it, it'll automatically appear um, on the on the bar on the uh, left, the record um, or the, the listing on the left. That's very correct. Yes. Okay. Once you come to uh, this tab, the name coach tab, you will see the listing of all the students not just the student, students, in fact, if you have a TA, a designer, basically all the users affiliated with your section in any capacity, you will see the list of everyone in here. This is just a sandbox course, which is why I have myself and my colleagues listed here, but you will see everyone. And whoever has recorded their name, you will see their names under the recorded names tab. Whoever hasn't recorded their name, you will see their names under unrecorded names. And as I pointed out, you can always send them a note reminding them that they, they can do this. Uh, this can be an optional, or if you want to make it a mandatory, you can also do that, uh, like something like a you know icebreaker participation sort of a thing. Uh, and yeah, you can ask them to do it once they do it, they will automatically move from unrecorded names to the recorded names list. And you can come anytime within your course and simply click on the play button and listen to their name recordings. Thank you. Of course. Any other questions? Um, yeah, real sure. quick. So I'm guessing, I'm supposing that the, the, your, your course doesn't have to be published in order to send these out? 
a course has to be published because it, in, in order to send out anything, course has to be published, be it announcement, be it anything else, it has to be published, yeah. And, and, the, and the reason why I asked, is that I thought that was probably the case, is I haven't published my course yet because I'm still working on like assignments and syllabus and stuff, um, but there's already two people that have done the, the name oh, yeah. recording. But it, it might be because probably they have already done it from other courses. And that's why okay. it's all because it's one account, right? And okay. if they have taken any other course in any other term uh, and their instructor insisted them on doing it, that's why it's uh, and because the username is same. Uh, now that they are in your course, it's showing the listing. OK, for sure. Can you repeat how I make a recording of my name? Sure, you of course. So once you come to record your name with Name Coach, on top you will find your name and you will find update. So let me say I go to update and it gives you now. You might ask that no, I'm not trying to update, I'm doing it for the first time, but it basically gives you the same options when you are doing it for the first time. Since I have already done it, I can't just you know go back. So I'm clicking on the update button to show you the options. Once you do it, uh, when you do it for the first time or you are updating it, the options are same. If you click on it, it will give you a couple of different options of how to record your name or how to upload a recorded file. Now, if you think you are more comfortable up, uh, you know, recording using your phone's voice note, uh, like we have on the iPhones or even otherwise on Androids, you can totally do that. You can um, uh, record your name using your phone that will be saved in the uh, format of a voice file and you can simply upload it. So you can go to uploader. You can upload the audio file from here. You can also use this feature here to upload. So say web recorder is the option and this is the option when you do it from your computer. You click on web recorder, click on record, record your name and click on submit and finish. Or you can go to uploader, upload the audio file that you have already done using your phone or your computer's webcam. You can also do that and you can um, upload that file and click on submit and finish. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Of course. All right, any other questions? Okay, I'll move on to our third tool for the session, which is the LibGuides. Now, library has tons and tons of very, very helpful guides to help you uh, with your course, uh, or with your course materials or otherwise, just as an additional information. And you can of course, uh, avail them from the library site directly as an instructor. But if you think, which in many cases instructors do need to, uh, that you have some things in the library guides or the lib guides that you need specifically for your course, you need your students to avail them. Now we have the option of integrating them with your Canvas course as well. Earlier, we didn't have this option, but since last term, we have made LibGuide available within Canvas as well. You can integrate LibGuide in specifically two places. One is module, another is assignment in the form of an external tool. Now let's take the example of modules first and the functionality remains the same even if you are trying to add it as part of your assignment. So to add LibGuides in your course, you will go to modules. And I have this test module. Let me uh, add my LibGuide to this. I will go to this little gray plus button. And by default, this will be assignment, but there is a little drop down from the drop down, if you go to the last option, which is external tool, you will get a bunch of different external tools. As I told you right at the beginning, we have tons and tons of tools. Some might be important for you uh, in your course, others might not be. 
But what we will do in this case is go down and find lib apps spring share. That's your lib guide, uh, the library guides that we have. Select this. Once you do that, you will find that there is an uh, additional window and here is all the selections that we need to do based on our requirement. First is the content type. From this little drop down, we will select all the content types that we have available. The first one is full lib guide. Basically what it does is you don't have to make any selections. It gives you the entire lib guide available uh, for your students. Again, as I said, you can always go to the library site outside of Canvas and get access to everything. It's still the same. But if you don't want your students to you know, go for, uh, here and then again, select something else. It might be confusing. You can have it all under one roof. So full lib guide is basically the entire lib guide. What I do want to show you, however, is what happens when you select these two, say single page. Now from the guide specification, this is where you can choose what single page you are trying to select for your course. Say African-American studies, you can select this guide and now you can select within this guide, which specific guide page you want or uh, you your course requires basically. Say American Civil War, I embed this course Definitely important is selecting add item button. Otherwise, nothing is going to make the difference. Once I have that, you see the name is no more just libguide. It says the specific page name, which is African American Studies, American Civil War. I select this one and let's see what opens up. It always asks you to open in a new window because it's directing you back to our library system. Now, you have all the recent publications related to Civil War and related to African American studies specifically. Now, this is how you can make the LibGuide search very, very streamlined, specific to your course. Let me go back and show you a couple more uh, examples as well. Again, I am going back to my module. I'll go to the plus sign. I will go to this little drop down, select external tool, scroll down and go to lib app spring share. From here, I will first choose the content type. Let's say this time I choose content box option. Again, it will ask for some more detailing so that it can be specific. From the content box, again, I get all the content boxes that's available within the LibGuide system. Say I choose um, anthropology this time. And now again, I have to choose what page. Okay, I have just one in this case. All right, I think I'm good. Okay, anthropology doesn't have, it looks like. So let me choose something else. Okay, let's choose anti-racism studies. Let's see what we have. Okay, we do have some. And we have eBooks. I have this and I choose embed content. Make sure definitely to click on add items. And now I have this particular ebook specifically embedded in my course. So students don't need to go to the lib guide overall and search for it. However, you have made the search quite easy for them to look into this uh, uh, material or this resources directly through the course. Any questions so far? Okay. Also, again, for the LibGuides, I'll go back and uh, show you a couple other options as well in uh, under the LibGuides area. So I'll 
select spring share one more time and from the content area if you scroll down this is where you will find all the databases so the first one in the option a to z databases is basically everything everything that we have in um, in the library if you don't want to be so broad which i'm assuming you don't you want to uh, streamline it as much possible for your students so if you don't want to do that there's a lot of options of you know uh, being more streamlined more specific so let's say data uh, i will select this one databases for specific subject uh, plus specialists from this from the drop down i can choose my area or my subject let's say i choose American studies. And once I embed the content for that, I will have all that's available for American studies. Here you go. So what it does is basically students don't have to go through all the tabs because A to Z database, if we have chosen the first option, it would have given just the overall page and they would have to go through all the tabs to find their items. But the moment you streamline it, in this case, I have streamlined to just American studies, it will bring everything that it has for American studies. So if you can see, it has everything from all alphabets. It's E, then it's F. So it's not like they have to go through all the alphabets, but you they get a streamlined list of everything related to that area. Any questions so far? All right. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually have a quick question. So yeah. I went to I'm trying to do this as you as you do it because that's mm -hmm. the way I learn. And I went and added mm -hmm. uh, lab apps that didn't have very much in my area. Like I I searched, and even getting as broad as health, it only had three options. Okay. Um. So I'm not sure if I'm looking in the right place. Yeah, you are looking at the right place. However, let me say, uh, if you are unable to find something, I would highly recommend. So if uh, you go to the A to Z to chat with an AU librarian and they can uh -huh. direct you to a lot more content uh, if you are unable to find something online, because uh, there might be some which is hidden or has not been updated or something like that. But yeah. definitely get in touch with one of our librarians and they can direct you to way more content. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And for everyone uh, that's part of this session, if you go to the A to Z databases, either from uh, Canvas or otherwise, if you are going through the library website in general, you will all of, it, uh, all of you will have this option, which is chat with the librarian, uh, also the text version. If you think that the libguides don't have enough resources, I highly, highly recommend chatting with one of our librarians and they're very helpful. They will guide you to the right direction. And it's right here. So you will find it right here in this tab. Any other questions? Okay, okay. No questions, it's great. I did, yeah, I did Vincent, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I, 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 um, again, this is my first time doing this, and I am using or going to attempt to use a textbook. And I got the textbook <laughs> through the Cengage platform. Okay. And the Cengage platform has the ebook, but it also has um, like sample quizzes and, and a quiz generator and stuff like that. So I don't know that this is coming in another um, round of instruction, but is there, and, and you were doing the module just now and I was, I was following along and I was able to link, because I saw the thing that said Cengage, and I was able to link my, the book I'm using to the module. Now, I don't know really know what the module does, um, but can you, can you explain like one, how do we use, use that? And two, if there's a way to use the quiz generator that Cengage has on their website or their platform through Canvas. Okay. Yeah, sure. So I'll uh, uh, 
explain uh, briefly because this uh, session is a little about you know uh, some other tools that we have introduced cengage is also another external platform that unfortunately we don't have admin access to i can only help uh, you understand how to add it which you pretty much have pointed out that we can go to the modules and exactly in the same way it can be added in the form of an external tool uh, module what module does is it gives an organization to the whole course meaning you have say uh, two assignments five readings one discussion to be done in week one and for that instead of telling uh, students to go to three different places which is uh, files assignments discussions you just build them in three these areas and bring them all together link them all together using the module uh, functionality, meaning when they come to modules, they will find everything under one module. If they click on an assignment, it will still take them to assignments area. However, they didn't have to go to assignments themselves. They came to module, they found everything in one place and clicked on it and went to their specific areas. So module is uh, like an organizer for your course. Now coming to your Second question, which is the primary question uh, about how to integrate Cengage, as I said, it can be added as an external tool. However, if this is any specific question related to the Cengage platform, I have to find out who's the admin for that and route you that way because I don't have admin access to any of these external tools, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. All right, um, I uh, am pretty much on the last leg of our session with the last tool I have uh, for you guys to share today. This is not specifically a very new introduction. We had it for, a, for the longest amount of time on Canvas integrated already. However, uh, we have found that not many instructors know the usage of it or how to enable it. So I thought, why not add this a very useful tool in the session as well. So the last tool that I'm going to discuss in today's session is the course reserves. Now, every course pretty much uh, needs some sort of course reserves in some way or the other. Uh, what we need to do is first enable the course reserve in your course and then request a reserve item. The first thing to enable is again, we have to go to the settings, go to navigation and add it. I have it right here. Let me just disable it and uh, show you. So again, I go to settings, I go to navigation area. These are all the apps that I have. I will disable it for a moment so that I can show you. So I, I just disabled course reserve and it has just jumped down to this list of disabled um, menu options and you can see it right here. So to enable it, I will go to the three dots again, click on it, click on enable. And again, it has jumped right up on the top uh, list. I don't like this position. So I'll just drag it and bring it towards the top and it, it's now here. And I'll definitely remember to click on the save button because otherwise it's not going to uh, affect any changes that I just did. Now that I have enabled course reserve in my course, it's right here. So I'll go to course reserves and <clears throat> If this is the first time you will be requesting a reserve item, this is how it will look. Basically, it has nothing. To add, a, uh, to add a reserve item to your course, you will simply click on add reserve item and you will find all these options or all these items that you can request from the library to be added. Let's take book. If you click on the book form, it gives you a a form that you need to fill up. And our librarians always advise that please fill it up with as much details as possible because that becomes helpful for them. 
If you are a instructor in performing arts uh, and you are mainly based in the Kadzen uh, Hall, then we recommend choosing the Kadzen Music Library instead of Benders because that will definitely be more convenient for you as well as your students, of course. Once you do that, you have a couple of different options to choose from, say, uh, for the loan period that you want, uh, and then the book title, author, everything. And then there is a notes area where you can put any additional notes that you want to. Once you have done that, you can click on the submit item. It will basically show you that the item has been submitted, has been requested, and one of the course reserve colleagues of mine will look into it and approve your request. You can do the same for not just books, but for any item that's listed under the items area, which is article, chapter, media, audio, file uploads, everything. As uh, um, I mentioned, if this is the first time you're doing, this is the first course that you're teaching, probably this list will come the most handy to you. If you have already taught any other course or your, one of your AU colleagues have added you to a some of their past courses, you know, just to get a hang of how the courses look like, then you might see a list of all the courses that you can import your items from. You will also get this list in the future terms. If you're te teaching, say, next in summer or in fall, you will see this uh, list as well. So, which basically it, uh, what it does is you don't have to make a new request every time. You can import the items from your past course to your present course. To do that, you will simply go to import items beside the course name, of course. You will see all the items that was there in the past course. You can select the start and the end date for this course. In this case, it will be the current term date. You can select these from here. You can also enable or disable some of these items. Now, it might happen that you don't need every item that was there in the past course. You just need a couple. You can make that selection from this list. Once you're done, you have made sure if these are all the items that you need for your current term. You can simply click on import item. It will first go into review phase. I'm not doing it because my colleagues will think, what is Shilpa doing in her sandbox course requesting for some items? So I don't want to actually do it. But yeah, once you select your items, simply click on import items, it will show you it'll give you um, a sort of a, um, a progress bar or uh, or a waiting waiting bar. Uh, once it has been reviewed, it will be added to your course. So you don't need to do it uh, like a new request in every term, you can import items from your past courses as well. Any questions so far? All right, that silence is great silence. Uh, I will add a link to the chat. This is basically a, a link of the site which discusses how to request um, course reserve items, everything that we discussed and in a little more details if you need so. It also has uh, some contact details in case you're finding it difficult to request one particular item, you can get in touch with our um, uh, with my colleagues from the course reserve and ask them about any specific uh, item that you might need for your course. So yeah, uh, that that uh, our colleagues are really, really helpful. So do get in touch with them if you need any help. Also, if you have noticed in the dashboard area, we have put up a notice or an announcement for the same for the course reserves. So definitely avail uh, this facility, it's very helpful. It's very easy. You don't have to, uh, you know, uh, go back and forth between libraries. You can request all the items at once at the very beginning of the term. So, any questions? This is very granular question, but uh, do we have to know the call number for a resource that we're adding? Nah, no. Okay. 
uh, I think it's more for if you know it already, if you have uh, that already in your list, say probably you have visited the library, you have taken a note of it, you can add it. If you don't know, uh, you can add it in the notes area that, you know, I just know the name. I didn't, I don't know uh, what it is. And uh, um, our colleagues will be able to help. Also, if you go through our A to Z databases, you might find some more information about your item there as well, whichever you are requesting. Yeah, I, I put in a, a book, but um, it says that it's a waiting reserves processing. So I don't know if it already exists. Yeah, so waiting reserves processing will probably mean that it's under review. And if... Uh, library don't have an item, I think they also make uh, provisions of getting one, uh, if it's a, it's a possible, of course. Okay, great, thank you. And then just to be clear, the Cats and Music Library is what we should choose even if it's not music and even if um, we should check the other one? Like, uh, does it matter, should we check the Bender Library if the Cats and Library doesn't have it? You can totally do that. Uh, as I said, it's more like a proximity thing. If you are based in that area, in the Kadzan area, it's uh, it, it becomes a little more convenient to pick it up from the music library than the benders. You just have to, you know, come there. Uh, so, yeah, it's totally on the proximity basis. If benders is more comfortable for you, choose that. If Kadzan is more comfortable for you, choose that. Gotcha. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. I think I can give you everyone back a couple minutes from this session. This is all I had in my store for some of the most uh, recently added yet very, very helpful tools and functionalities of Canvas. Uh, if you have any more questions related to these specific functionalities and tools or otherwise uh, anything Canvas related, please feel free to contact us at canvas at american.edu. I'm putting the email in the chat and our phone number as well. Uh, give us, give me one moment. So that's our phone number and email ID. You can call us. Our uh, phones might be a little on the busier side uh, around this time because obviously the term is starting and it's been quite busy with our tickets and calls. Uh, but feel free to leave a voice message and we will get back to you at the earliest. We always uh, recommend or prefer tickets around this time at least. So. If you are unable to get us over phone, please send us a ticket at Canvas at American. And um, it's just two of us. It's me and my uh, colleague, Zach. Many of uh, you might have worked with Zach already uh, or will be working with him. He's phenomenal. He's amazing. Uh, so he, you might work with him uh, going forward in the uh, term as well. So it's just me and uh, Zach. And sometimes it might be Ashley as well. Uh, so yeah small team. It might take a little time for us to get back to you, but we promise we will get back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank right. you. Have a good day. You too.